Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so what am I talking about today? <laughs> I don't know, I haven't really thought about it because I'm literally just taking a pause in my morning writing to get this done before lunchtime, so I apologise in advance if my stomach starts growling and you guys can hear it again. Um, I know you didn't last time, but <laughs> that's just a warning for you. Um, so, yeah, we are now... Yeah, now in July. We are somehow now in July? I don't understand how that has happened. Um, it's like more than half the year is gone already. Um, <laughs> and I still haven't released those first two books. Um, having said that, uh, as I mentioned, I think last week, uh, my cover guy has now started working on the covers, at least has been working on the first cover. <laughs> um, so just waiting for the second cover to be started and then hopefully finish the first. The first cover didn't actually take him that long to do, um, fortunately. Um, in part of the thing uh, trying to do with the, the covers for the Dollmaker Storms book is making them as simple as possible. Um, and this is in part because, you know, having two covers needed at the same time, I didn't want them to be like overly complicated for my cover guy anyway. Um, and also partly because, uh, partly because the Shadows Beneath the Light series itself um, is going to eventually contain more books, probably books released in two parts um, to, as, as their own kind of little arcs. Um, so it makes sense to try, to try and keep everything as simple as possible so that the series as a whole can have a nice easy theming to it um, and not be too, too overly complicated and be very easy to identify. Um, because it, it all sort of falls into this nice simplistic style. So yeah, that is that is kind of like the, the motivation behind making the, the covers for the Dormaker Sons book as simple as possible. And the first cover is it's just looking so looking so good. As I said, I don't know, we may uh, need to adjust it slightly um, once the second cover has been created, just so that we can make sure that everything is looking uh, looking consistent between the two things and looking like the, the best way between the two things um on all these little details it's just it's so good <laughs> it's so good um so yeah i mean hopefully fingers crossed by the end of this month i will have released the first two books that i'm planning to release this year um i'm also and i know i keep saying this about my spin-off books, but I'm also pretty sure that the one that I'm writing now is the last of this spin-off. Um, so the, the I'm, I'm basically thinking that, you know, this is the last of this spin-off for these characters. Um, <laughs> she says, and she, she may, she may end up changing her mind, but you know, right, right at this point in time, Right at this point in time, I'm like this. This is almost definitely has to be pretty much. <laughs> I can't see. I can't see where else there is is going to be story. Four seems like a nice number. It reflects the main series. It may well be that at some point I'll do another spin off um, in its own series. That a few years later, dealing with some of the other characters. Um, but like have that as its own four part. I mean, I think having this as a four part thing works because it reflects the main series and then, you know, potentially maybe uh, leaving, leaving, uh, leaving an opening to either tell stories that are set slightly further back in the past. So in between all of like the never rating stuff and the, 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 the spin off stuff, um, alternatively setting it more in the future. Um, I mean, the, 
book that I'm writing now is ending in 2008. <laughs> it's set sort of at the end of 2007, beginning of 2008, and it's like, I think, like literally the first couple of weeks of 2008. Um, that's what I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do like a little bit of a skip forward at the end, just like later in 2008, just so that I can have the ending that I want. <laughs> That, that's kind of going on in my head right now and that's one of the reasons why I think um this is probably the last book in, in this uh, mini series this spin-off series um because in the other three books there's been like this setup for someone else's story to to take place I mean with LJ's it's been a little bit less because you don't get that set up until like the very end but certainly and yeah to be fair with uh with Rowan's you don't necessarily get the setup for the character but you do get the setup for the situation so um and, and again that's towards the end of the book um I think Toby's is the only one that kind of suggests all most of the way through that there's probably going to be a sequel focusing on Rowan um just because Rowan plays such a major part in Toby's story um Whereas LJ doesn't really play a part in Rowan's story and Silas doesn't really play a part in LJ's story. Um, but you do get these little setups sort of towards the end of each of the books that kind of play on to the next one. Whereas the way I'm picturing the ending of Silas's story, I think it's a nice, I think it's a nice bookend. Yeah, OK, there are still going to be little things that aren't, that haven't necessarily been explored. Um, but in terms of the themes that kind of connect these stories to each other and in terms of um, the sort of the, the storyline, the overarching storyline itself, I think it kind of closes itself off quite nicely with um, elements of LJ's story sort of coming back into, into Silas's story and actually in a lot of ways Silas is kind of the perfect character to have tied up, uh, to, have to have tied up everybody's storylines because she's the character that is most naturally connected to the other characters. And at, you know, to that, all the characters are kind of connected to each other anyway, but she was the most natural one to bring everybody in for um, an ending, which is going to sort of nice, not, you know, 100, because I don't like nice, 100% neat, tidy, everything's tied up in nice bow endings anyway. I like there being that kind of slightly open element so that you know you can picture these characters lives going on after the, the closing of the book um but in terms of like the the overarching um the overarching feeling of the story rather than the plot i don't think there's an overarching plot of the story so uh, of the four books so much as there is a kind of an overarching sense of how you know how these stories are kind of feeling um where I think the, the ending that I've got planned for Silas's story is a nice way of kind of going, okay, that, that closes the, the chapter on this little spin-off, um, but also leaves it open for another spin-off, um, focusing on other characters um, in its own, probably own series, that's <laughs> just based on the kind of writer that I am. <laughs> but at this point in time, I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know when I would set it. I don't know if I would set it before. I don't know if I would set it after um, the spin-off. It's, yeah, at, at this moment in time, it's kind of, it's very, very much up in the air um, what I would do next if I was to write any more books. But I like the feeling of, for never rating collection books, for spin-off books, and then the potential of maybe writing something that either goes before and between the two, um, or after the uh, or after the two. Um, but it, yeah, at, at this point in time, I think I very much feel like I've completed what I've set out to do with these spin-offs um, and exploring. The characters as much as I wanted to with these spin-offs. Um, there's definitely like a really strong feeling of identity sort of going on and, and this sort of mini tangent was all started from me saying uh, editing, editing. <laughs> so yeah, no, um, this mini, mini tangent is, is me saying that the I'm hoping Silas's story will be the end <laughs> and I will um, 
be able to concentrate on doing a little bit more writing for the third Shadow of Light book whilst I've got the opportunity and also focusing a bit more heavily on getting the editing of No Doors Allowed done um, so that I can get that ready for hopeful release at the end of the year, which is the one I'm trying to say, which is I'm still hopefully on track for releasing three books by the end of the year. Um, obviously, the first two are just waiting on covers. <laughs> So they're like, literally, they're, they're ready to go, they're uploaded onto KDP, um, I get this strong feeling that once I actually um, go live with them and have done my first free book promotion, because I think they counted from, uh, from when you actually upload them rather than when they actually go live, I think I might be able to like chip it into a second free promotion fairly soon after <laughs> and and be able to build a little bit of that initial hype um because you know the the more more copies you can have out there the more likely you're going to get early reviews and the more likely that you're, you're gonna you're gonna do a little bit better from everything um but yeah i i, I don't know I'm, i mean i'm only sort of basing that on um how i remember it being for the colors i see which was obviously that was the first one that went up on on kdp the other two sort of transferred over afterwards where i sort of got a lot of the stuff and, and created the, um, the project actually a little while before it went live um and its first uh cycle repeat kind of i believe reflected that date so I'm I'm hoping, hoping that I will be able to sort of do two quick turnaround promotions um, as part of its initial launch, um, which hopefully fingers crossed. I mean I know I don't make any money from free book promotions, but hopefully fingers crossed um, if I do it and I, and I do and I am able to and I am able to time it correctly, I might get an initial really good first wave. Um, with those books which hopefully will result in some reviews. Um, fingers crossed I'm going to get reviews from my beta readers anyway. <laughs> fingers crossed. No, none of them have finished reading it yet. Fingers crossed I will get um, the, the reviews from my beta readers which will put it in a slightly stronger position anyway which will hopefully help with that initial that initial buzz and that initial uh, you know, first wave of, of getting things out there. <laughs> Choose this. Um, and you know, again, fingers crossed if I am able to do a quick turnaround um, and have two free book promotions within that initial 90 days, which is, you know, the, the most important um, period of time, then again, fingers crossed, hopefully going forward, they will be in a slightly stronger position. And if they're in a slightly stronger position, and then, you know, then will hopefully lead people on to onto my other books. And we can go from there. <laughs> but at this point in time, it's all just a little bit up in the air, a little bit kind of, um, I'm not completely sure how things are going to pan out, how things are going to go. I really, 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 really need the covers. I really need the covers. Then, then we can we can work out everything else after. Um, and as and I, as I think I've mentioned before, the cover for No Doors Out should hopefully be easier to get, to get done <laughs> because there's not going to be a paperback version of it because it's too much of a doorstop. It would just it would just cost too much. Um, and, and, you know, and if you know at some point some someone somewhere kind of makes it a more viable option, then you know I will. Uh, consider making these books paperbacks, um, available for paperback as well. But as it is, I think keeping the Never Rating Collection as a whole ebook only, um, and then having the spin offs because they are smaller books with the paperback available as well, is probably the way I'm going to do it. Yeah, it, it's probably going to be the way that I'm going to do it. I mean, it does mean that I do lose the amazing um, paperback cover for Hyena Boy, although that would need to be this size and, and, and everything anyway. Um, but at, at the same time, it's just sort of like, 
Yeah, no, it makes sense. It's an ever rating collection because it's mostly dual stops as uh, ebook only because because uh, because I see it gets red. The colours I see gets red. It does get red. It, it's just it's unbelievable how popular the colours I see is in comparison to <laughs> to the other two books. It's just, I, I, how, how, how is it so popular? It just, it just, it just boggles my mind. It really does. Um, anyway, so yeah, that is that is the general plan uh, going forward for the rest of the year, which is get the two Dolmesa Sun books actually covered and released, um, finish writing Silas, and then focus a little bit more energy onto um, onto the editing process of No Doors Allowed. But no doors allowed can be released before the end of the year, and then the beginning of next year, more than likely, will be the release of <laughs> of the spin-off books. Maybe all in one go. Maybe one at a time throughout the year to give my <laughs> and then obviously also getting um, We Giants ready for release as as well next year. So yeah. Potentially I'm releasing five books next year. <laughs> That's a mad nuts. Absolutely terrifying. Absolutely terrifying concept. <laughs> Alright, okay. So, with that all said, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed listening to me going a little bit all, all over the place with this one um, with some updated stuff. Um, one final updating thing before I go, um, Echo is going to be having a free book promotion next week. I say next weekend, it's next weekend from where I am at the time I'm recording this. It's this weekend from the point in time that this is going up. It will be the 18th of July until the 22nd of July. So again, starting on the weekend and going through to the Wednesday. So yeah, Echo's having its next free book promotion. Yay! This is your warning for that. <laughs> okay, so now finally, all that dating thing's done. Hope you guys have enjoyed this one. <laughs> hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Um, I hope you're looking forward to seeing what I'm going to be talking about next time. And I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.